All right. We ran through our events real quick while we were yapping. So let's start with talking about the Alliance Tournament that is now underway. This just kicked off yesterday. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the structure, we'll just go through the basic mechanics real fast. So every day during the event, the tournament is a three day long tournament. You can complete three tasks per day, meaning in the course of the tournament, you can finish up to nine tasks. The tasks are basically here, and they're like away team assignments, where they will tell you to go do a very specific thing. Uh, they range in point value, starting as low as 80 and ranging all the way up to 10,000. However, I will point out that for most of the 10,000 milestone here events, um, whatever it's telling you to acquire, most likely, not always, but most of them will require some type of spend, because they're just... How do you acquire a thousand uncommon formation or mana directives without buying a pack? Like that one you're going to kind of have to do. Getting 500 epic Dominion solo or mana directives you might be able to do if your refineries are up. And maybe if you can do a double pull. Um, like if I went in here to my Bajoran refinery, I, I don't think it's up. But if I were to be able to come in here to, oh, to my rare loot exchange and I was able to do a double pull right here, I could get 500 epic directives. So that would be a good one that I could finish without spending any money if I had this available. And since the tasks reset every day, depending on when your cooldowns and stuff are, you do have to be a little strategic about what you're picking and when. Um, because if I took this today and my cooldown isn't up until, you know, Friday afternoon, it's Thursday night, um, all tasks will refresh in 15 hours. So if I had, you know, 22 hours left on my cooldown, I can't pick this up now. I'm just wasting the task. So some of these are really hard to do, acquiring the replicator rations and things like that, acquiring the uncommon skill points. Very hard to do some of these 10,000 point ones, but occasionally one or two will sneak in that might actually be possible depending on, again, where you're at with things. Uh, for the most part, some of the 2,000 and 4,000 point ones, if you've been saving materials, this could be a good opportunity to use them, which I think is the whole purpose and point behind this exercise, um, is basically to create another way for people to spend materials instead of necessarily saving them, um, or to potentially, you know, some people might feel a little pressured if you go look at like the Alliance leaderboard and realize like, oh, we're only, you know, 30,000 points behind the leader. Like if, if some people can just put up a few more 10,000 point events, like we'll, we'll catch up to them in no time. And that might force people or influence people, should I say, um, to doing something that might require making a purchase. And it'll generate some more revenue for them that way. But for the most part, a lot of these you can just come in here, pick up one. Obviously, you want to try to do the one that has the highest point total that you are capable of completing. Don't pick up a task you're not capable of completing. There's really no point in doing it. Um, some of these little low-level ones, you know, there's an event to re-roll them right now. And they gave us all a bunch of re-roll tokens to do it. But I don't know. I'm personally not really engaging with that because how do I know somebody lower level of my alliance? This might be the the only thing that they're capable of doing. And I want to re-roll this event on them and take it away. And now they're stuck with something else that they can't do. Like, oh, you know, spending X board credits. Well, how am I going to spend 6,000 uncommon? I already did all my favors. Um, just a spoiler alert with this one. The NX01 does also take uncommon board credits in a lot of the levels. So if you do need to spend them and you don't have any favors to do, you can spend them upgrading your NX01 also. That's how I figured. I did one of these earlier, and that's what I was like. Um, I I think I needed like to spend 7,500 credits, and I only had two favors left that I could do that were like 4,000 or 5,000 in total. So I had to find alternative ways to spend, and none of the research, uh, the research takes just the common credits. And even when you're trying to do uh, like a, 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 a pair down, or a buy down, converting uncommons into commons, just that's only a once per day thing, so you can't even keep doing that over and over again. So, um, as far as the leaderboard goes, you, this leaderboard here, as you can see, these are not players just on your server, 
uh, or alliances just on your server. These are all of the other alliances in your region. So this is probably a North America or Eastern North America. Um, there's 2,300 total participants. I'm assuming that's 2,300 alliances across the variety of servers. Scrolling all the way down here, it'll show you the top 100 alliances. And I'm going to guess there's ones that are a lot smaller. Uh, you may not be on the top 100, depending on, again, how many servers are being covered by this. Um, as far as rewards go, depending on where you finish, you will get a bunch of tournament qualifier credits, plus avatars if you're in the highest group. Those can be redeemed right here in the old member store, and there's some good stuff in this store. There is some good stuff in this store. You've got officer shards, you've got artifacts, you've got forbidden tech, you've got directives. You also have these materials to source some older primes. Don't get too excited though, because this still takes a thousand particles to complete the prime. So even though this run right here might be like, oh, the PvP damage prime research, woohoo, I can finally get that. Well, it takes a thousand particles, so you have to redeem this ten times, and you're limited to only five <laughs> per week. So even if you put all of your materials into it, the best you could do it in is maybe in two weeks you could unlock it. Uh, then as you come down here, you can see as you rank up, you'll have some better options. Better officers like Ta'ana are down here. Different uh, forbidden texts that are a little harder to unlock. And artifacts, as you move up in ranking, going to have access to do some of that. There's a ship part prime in the Exborg tree that you will take a little while to source, but consistently earning should give you the opportunity. Down here you've got, again, these are full unlocks, 39 shards. Uh, pretty good. I think the ones up here were, were also full unlocks at 39 shards. Okay, so that's pretty pretty, pretty strong. Uh, rare Zindi Armada Directives could certainly speed that up a little bit for you. Additional sourcing, so that could speed up those primes a little bit. And then you've got some other epic forbidden techs here as well as you make your way down to the, the highest standings. And then this is even new, the new Isolytic Weapon that was just released, the Cure Shara that was just released, which I think works now. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if this is uh, fully functional or mostly functional or what the deal is there. Uh, and then you've got some of these other Omega Particles and stuff and Prime Particles that can do some additional prime researches for you. So overall, some good potential rewards and possibilities here. Uh, if your alliance keeps up with this and, and stays competitive, uh, like I said, I think some of these tasks are really just designed to try and, you know, bleed some materials out that people have been sitting on. People, you know, a lot of people don't do Dominion Armadas anymore because they don't need the resources, the materials. So maybe they're just sitting on a stockpile of directives, and this is another way to use those to get some value out of them. Or people who are saving FKR directives for specific events or for Saturday events to try and you know win or, or compete, earn additional points in SLBs and things. This might be a way to get you to spend some of those. Uh, people have been sitting on commander skill points. This might be a way to get you to spend some of those outside of waiting for a fleet commander event. Um, there's even some stuff in here like spend six G6 crystal. Um, I, if you're a G6 player, this still seems like something that's kind of high that I don't know you would want to do outside of um, like a weekend event. Like I wouldn't want to do this event on a Thursday and spend maybe that's not a lot, but it seems like that's a decent amount of points that you'd be passing up on for an officer auction just to get 2,000 points in this alliance tournament. Now, from what I've heard, um, it sounds like the event store here, the Alliance store, will remain open for one day after the tournament ends because you'll get a reward that'll have additional uh, currency and stuff in it, tournament credits. But it sounds like 
also after that, when the store goes down, the currency is going to change. Like every week, they're going to put a new currency in, which I understand why they would do that because obviously they own, they don't want people saving up and stockpiling materials to get some of the better prizes. They want you doing the 10,000 point tasks to try and get some of the better prizes because that makes them more money. Um, but adding a new currency every single week they're doing this event seems... What's the word I'm looking for? Seems really dumb. Seems really dumb. Like, we do, all we talk about is how we've got too many currencies in this game, and you're going to put in a new currency every week? Or every four days, or whatever, how often this runs? I'm guessing it's weekly. It runs for three days long, then there's like a one-day grace period, and then you get like three days off. So every week you're going to put in a new currency to spend all of... So spend it or lose it kind of thing every week. Seems really dumb. Yeah, 52 new currencies a year. That's that's what we want. To go on top of the 4,700 currencies we already have clogging up our inventory. So hopefully that's not really the case. Although it seems like that's the direction this is heading in. Uh, hopefully public feedback kind of walks them back from that idea. And they do carry over the currency from week to week. I will probably spend most of mine. Um, I might, if the numbers, I'll probably end up with a little bit left over just because the numbers never work out right. Uh, but I'm planning on spending it on things. We'll probably get, you know, a little bit here and there. Maybe get some of this for the Syndicate Prime or something. This is the one that doubles your daily. So whatever you claim in your little daily bundle here, 500, 600, whatever it is, 400. That prime just doubles that amount. Fox, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Maybe the currency will be per league. That could be possible. Maybe it's just five different currencies. Because right now we're all in the qualifier league. Um, I think if you can see the different rankings... Right now, we're all just in the qualifier league. Um, the top whatever. In the qualifier, all the alliances will split into cross-server regional leaderboards. At the end of this event, alliances will be divided into five leagues based on the rank they achieved in the qualifier. That's going to put you into one of the next league. So all of the high-end alliances should end up in the master league, and then the next Grouping alliances will end up in the Expert League, and so on and so forth. Um, different rewards for the ranks and for the tasks. And then, based on how you finish in those individual events, right? So, basically, they have to figure out where everybody is. So, if they're going to take the top, you know, 50 alliances here, you're all in the, ma the you know, Super Master League. And then the next 100 are in the next league, or whatever the case is, right? 10%, 20%. Whatever, however they split it up. And then they'll come back. The, so you're right. The different leagues could have different currencies. So maybe there's only like five currencies. That would make a hell of a lot more sense. Um, and then, you know, at every couple of months or whatever like that, they'll do a reset. And they'll kick everybody back down and they'll make them requalify. So you maybe if you have any th this qualifier currency... Maybe it's not like gone forever, lost. Maybe it's just, hey, probably not using any of it for the next three to four months. And then obviously if we finish high here, we'll end up in maybe the Master League here. We'll have an opportunity to get these particular shards. Um, I, don't, I would assume it will also give you the option to purchase anything below it. That would make sense. So if we jump right to the Master League, it's not like, oh, we have to purposely tank our rating because we need to get, we, people want to buy stuff out of this Expert League instead. Like, we want to get these weapon particles. It's like, oh, well, let's tank our rating. Like, I would hope that that's not the case, that they're going to make people do that because that would just be silly. And it'll be a situation much like it does with Faction Rep where 
once you get to a certain level, you unlock everything below it. So hopefully that'll be the case. Yeah, that could be more different currencies based on your rank in like Silent Hostels. Yeah, sort of something like that. Rehashing that mechanic. Um, and again, some decent rewards and prizes and stuff in here too. I mean, you've got all kinds of different forbidden texts and stuff available. Artifacts, directives, prime particles. Some of them are outdated, but still good stuff for the most part. And the other cool thing about this is that the member scoreboard appears to actually work. So you can now praise all the people who are doing the heavy lifting and carrying your alliance with some of these higher point totals. And you can shame all the people at the bottom who are, you know, not doing a whole lot or haven't done anything at all. Um, my alliance has, I think, 101, 102 people. Only 91 have scored through two days of the event. So I can clearly see that 10 people haven't done anything. And some of these other people might have done, like, one out of three attempts. Um, or something like that. This guy, he's attempted five. He's picked five events. He only actually completed two of them. Not to shame you. I apologize for calling you out like this. You just happen to be the last guy. Uh, so he did two 80-pointers and picked up a couple other ones that I guess were harder uh, that he wasn't able to complete. So... Death Kill, your alliance is doing pretty bad. Going to get a low placement, sure. What's up, Bel Air? Trek Diva says if you want to pay for it, it's a total cash grab. It's not a total cash grab. It's an opportunity to, because there are opportunities, of course, from doing these tasks to use a lot of materials that you already have, for sure. If you want the highest point totals, yes. You're most likely either going to have to have primes and things you've already spent on or, or, or materials you've already acquired to do turn-ins to get certain things. Because uh, a lot of them are acquire. Be careful and be mindful of the wording on some of these. Acquire section ciphers, not spend them. Um, acquire armada directives. There are ones that say spend armada directives. Defeat uncommon armadas. This one you don't even have to start. You can oh, Well, this one's a solo armada, so you do have to start that. But some of these other ones here, um, there are ones where you just have to like defeat three FKR armadas. So you don't have to start them. You just jump in and help somebody, and you would get credit for completing the task so just be mindful of the wording and what they're asking you to do but yes is it something that they're probably hoping people will be using up materials on or spending to get these additional packs to acquire things that they don't have to get this high, highest placement sure um, it's also possible some of this stuff might be earned through um, multiphasics so maybe people who are sitting on a pile of multiphasics from other stuff they previously bought might cash it in to help acquire some of this stuff too. Uh, replicator rations, not something you can normally get from that, but... Yeah. 41 out of 72 have done the events. A lot of apathy. Hypodermics doesn't even have 40 done. Denver's got 55 out of 94 people. There were some glitches... I know the first day where people did events and they didn't quite show up right and they had to get like comp chests and things like that with the points or or with the scoring. So obviously we're not going to hold everybody's feet over the fire for the first go round because it's scopely and there's always glitches when they release new content. Um, but you might write those people's names down, right? Like if there's if I can see that only 91 completed an event, we've got 102. So there's 11 people who haven't completed one that we would know of. If I were, you know, in an alliance leadership position, I might write those names down and put them off to the side. And then next week when this event comes back and things seem like they're running smoother again, look and see where we're at. And if those same 11 people are on both lists, you know, and don't complete events a second time around, then we might have to have a conversation. Be like, yo, what's going on? Why aren't you doing these events? You know, you're holding back the alliance. We need all participation to do this. We're not just competing against the other people on our server who we routinely finish in first place against. We're competing against all the people on, like, 50 other servers. So we got to step up our game here uh, if we want to continue to be one of the top alliances in the entire game. Kind of conversation, right? A little come-to-Jesus meeting. And if that doesn't work, well, then you might have to look at 
potentially swapping them out and replacing them with a player who is more active and more engaged and more interested in doing this type of content. So, You're surprised I'm positive about this event? It's got good rewards, and for the most part, you can do it free to play. You just have to have all the people in your alliance working together, which is what the alliance is supposed to kind of do in general, is all work together toward common goals. And a lot of the alliance leaderboard events usually require spending, and this one doesn't require it per se. There are obviously tasks you can do specifically that, yes, will require, but some of the 2,000, 4,000 point tasks can be done without spending. Even a couple of the 10,000 point tasks can technically be done, uh, like we said, if your cooldowns are right and things like that, without spending. And that type of event, I'll be happy with, I'll be supportive of. Um, you know, if you want to be number one overall in the entire game, yeah, you're probably, probably going to need some people in your alliance to spend some money. No, no lie in there, but um, to even be able to get top five or top ten across 40 or 50 servers with very little financial output, I think that's the type of event we would very much like to have in this game. More events like that. Trek Diva thinks you can't win this without big spending. I'll be honest, looking at my rewards bundles that I get from my alliance, we haven't spent a lot. Because if we did, every time they bought something, I'd have a reward bundle. And I didn't claim 50 reward chests today like I do when, you know, a battle pass launches or when a new ship or something comes out and everybody's, you know, the top guys are buying the ship and they're buying the upgrade packs and they're doing all this. I'll have 50 or 60 rewards sitting there. I think I've probably claimed maybe like 15 to 20 over the last two days, so not a lot in the old reward situation. So I don't know that we're spending a tremendous amount just on this event. And I like that. I like that. Lloydson thinks this will just create super alliances. That could be the case. You could see more alliance mergers now where some of these, you know, like we said, you've got an alliance of 90 people, but only 45 are participating in the event. There might be another alliance of 90 people out there that are having the same problem. And maybe that's a situation where you flip-flop, right? You take the 45 you've got, the 45 they've got who are actually participating in this, put them together into Alliance A, and the people who don't want anything to do with this, well, you're all in Alliance B now. Could be a case where you see some players flip-flopping and moving around a little bit. GP resubscribing. Yo, yo, yo. For 21 months. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. I think the event... When they announced it, I thought it had potential if they did it right, depending on how much they paywalled it. And, of course, of course they paywalled it. We knew they were going to paywall some aspect of it. But the fact that a good portion of the tasks and things are still completable without this being, you know, entirely blocked up. Feels like a pretty good thing. Let's re-roll some of these 80 pointers. I like how I re-rolled 80 pointers and didn't replace them with any 80 pointers. Spend 46,000 uncommon export credits. That's a lot of export credits to spend. If you don't have the favors to do it, upgrade your NX-01. <clears throat> if you can't upgrade your NX-01, well, you got a different problem. Yeah, the 10,000 point events, for the most part, are either, you either have to, you know, 
have the right circumstances of, of primes and, and things like that to be able to claim these large amounts or you're buying a pack. Um, so yeah. But that's my take. Excuse me. A little something stuck here tonight. I don't know what's going on. That's my take on the Alliance tournament situation. Um, I Like you said, guys have speculated. I think, hopefully, it'll just be five or six currencies, one for each little bracket you're in, and not like, hey, it's a new currency every tournament. It'll just be a new currency every league. So you'll have the qualifier league and then the five other leagues, so six total currencies getting added. Makes a lot more sense. Um, and then, of course, the other benefit to it is getting points for the Emerald Chain as well, which is the one thing we didn't talk about. We mentioned it earlier, but... Uh, so, hypothetically speaking, we finish in the 1%. So, there's 2,500 participants in this. So, the, what, the top 25 would move on to the, the highest league. We'd get 4,400 credits. And then maybe we'd move into the Masters League. And then depending on where we rank here, we'd pick up additional tournament credits as well as Emerald Chain XP. Potentially up to 75,000. Okay, worst case scenario. And you can see your rankings here. And you could obviously pick up a couple of spots here on this, including working on getting shards for the new officer, but as well as things like building speed, research speed, you know, 450% hull health, nothing really to, to laugh about, which will obviously scale up and get higher based on, or, or adjust based on your ops level. Little bonuses like that, extra bonus damage in Q's trial hostels could certainly be helpful in progressing in some of that stuff. And, you know, as you get further and further into this, you're getting... Scrapping speed bonuses, warp speed bonuses. Um, is there anything like super awesome in here? More hull health, more apex barrier, more shield health, okay. Damage to armadas, okay. Like nothing necessary. Obviously the ability in your alliance store to also get additional things being added too. Like the NX-01 gets added, the Eviscerator gets added, refits get added eventually. Your Zindi Armada packs get additional rolls. Like, all right, well, nobody's really doing those anyway, but you know, obviously there are. The Assimilated Stella getting added at Milestone 24 seems a little out of place, but sure, why not? Just to be at, like, Milestone 4, not 24. And then obviously you got the Monavine refit. You know, there's some decent stuff in here that has, has been exclusively pay-only up to this point, so being able to uh, start to source some of these materials free to play. I think is a, w a win in the long run for a lot of players. Obviously it's going to take time, uh, a lot of time to acquire these things, but even if they are running you know, weekly leagues, it might take three or four months to get something for free, but that's kind of what it takes anyway, right? Anything they put new into the game, a lot of times it's a three to six month sourcing path once it's announced. Getting the NX-01, getting the Eviscerator, what are we talking about here? We're talking about four to six months of weekly grinding, weekly events, and this kind of falls into that same pattern. So it's kind of right in the same timeline and wheelhouse as a lot of other stuff we've got, and we all seem to be enjoying those free-to-play paths, so hopefully this continues in... And works out to be okay. So, all right, let's ban somebody. Bye bye. Thanks for playing. Lights and thinks it's an awful event that's only going to get worse for free to player. For free to play. If you're if you're free to play and your whole alliance is free to play, yeah, there's probably a ceiling 
where point totals are capped at. You're probably only doing the 2,000 or 4,000 events, probably not even doing too many of them. So, you know, you're getting 800 and maybe 800 and maybe like a 2,000. So what's that? 3,600 points is what you're getting over the, the th each day. And over the course of the three days, it's just over 10,000 points, 11,000 points. Maybe you'll come in over the three days. That's just kind of where you're stuck. And hopefully that'll be decent enough to get you, you know, looking at where guys are, getting ten or 11,000 points, you know, some decent point totals. Might get you in the, even in the top half, top whatever of your alliance. And it's everybody working together, because even if you don't have some of these big numbers up here, but if you have active participation, those small guys can still do okay. You're not going to win. You're never going to win in this game. The people who win are always going to be the ones spending. That's just how this game has been set up since day one. But you can still be competitive, unlike a lot of other events. A lot of other SLBs and ALBs, unless you're the one actually spending, you're probably not getting anywhere. And at least this time around, you can contribute and make a dent and help your alliance without actually putting in any of your own dollars. Let the people who are going to spend continue to do what they're comfortable doing and still get some good rewards out of it. So, And you are free to disagree with that. If you think the only way you can do anything in this event is to spend, 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 well, I guess we'll see how over the next couple of weeks how that shakes out. Because that's the other thing too, right? Once you get into the qualifier, you're going to get separated, right? The top 25 or 30, the top 1% of the alliances, so in this case the top 24, if they round up, these top 24 alliances right here, they go. They're in the Masters League. So obviously these people in here were spending 800, 800, 800, but that's going all the way down to people only putting in 500,000 points. They're all gone now. They're in the Masters League. Great. Your alliance is in the next rung. You're down here competing with these people who are in the, the 300s and 400 thousands. Maybe that's a little more manageable for you. You're in the next tier league. Still plenty of good rewards in the store for being in the expert league. You've got plenty of good stuff to work towards to help acquire stuff like that. And your point values aren't going to need to be as astronomical, which means you're not going to have to continue spending and things like that. And that's great. That's great that they're willing to just sort of break things up and not just be like, well, all the top, you know, whatever, or all the alliances, this, or all the alliances with 100 plus people are all in here. And you're like, yeah, we're 100 plus people, but none of us spend any money. So we constantly lose and come in last place. Great. You don't have to worry about that. You're going to get moved down to the next league and where you'll be facing alliances of 75 or 80 people who don't spend any money you've got 100 they've got 75 neither of you are spending any money so that should make it a much more fair fight if you have the participation so, that's my two cents that's my take on the event as always, I could be wrong. Guess we'll just have to wait and see how the actual qualifiers shake out over the next once the qualifiers are done, where things end up being.